Hello everybody and welcome back to another video in a series where I spend 200 hours making a game in Godot. Long story short, I am a backend software engineer with an interest in games and I'm documenting the process in which I develop a game for 200 hours. Now, this episode is the 100 hour mark, so we're actually officially halfway. Uh, it's definitely a little bit overdue. Um, I am still alive and I am still working on the game. But I'll break that down a little bit more as we get into the video. So, hope everyone's okay. I look forward to it, and let's get into it. So, where do I begin? I guess, where have I been for the past two months? So, uh, first and foremost, just to show you guys, I am at 100 hours uh, on the project. One of the things I didn't realize beforehand was that this only tracks when I'm looking at code. So, if I'm working within Godot on nodes and I'm working on the graphical elements this doesn't actually track the time which kind of makes things a little bit interesting because this is a hundred hours of code and uh, not a hundred hours of everything else so that's really kind of skews with it uh but really what i wanted to talk about was after the last episode 75 hours uh there's a really big perception shift so if you guys have kept up in the previous episodes you'd know that a lot of the time i was kind of just making random things and just kind of doing whatever I wanted to do, which is fine. And that's a good learning experience. And I think if I spent the whole 200 hours just doing random things, that'd be fine. Um, but I really had to kind of take a sit back and just think, what is the end result that I'm actually trying to make here? I can't really just keep doing random things and then expect everything to kind of work in the end after 200 hours and all these random things kind of fit together and so I just spent a lot of time not actually working on the game and just thinking what do I want the end result to look like and what are the things that I need to start building and putting time into to contribute to that end result. Here's the project um, in terms of you know how the basic project structured nothing's really changed a lot of what's been done over the past 25 hours now has really been um, modifying things and kind of filling in the details so at the in the last episode I talked about how I kind of expanded into different zones. And I think there is something there about that. So I've started I've got a little work in progress castle here. And in my head, this is kind of gonna be the starting zone and the the kind of tutorial, I guess, if you like. A lot of what I've worked on here is gonna be the step after that. Um, so I'm going to put like a very basic quest in here and like a very basic dungeon just to kind of walk through and kind of progress the player through. And then I, I've kind of started expanding into this more kind of like mushroomy, jungly zone um, that's kind of blocked off like, you know, the classic Pokemon thing where Snorlax blocks you and stuff and you need some item from completing something to kind of unlock into the next zone. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to follow, completely go through with this, but um it's it's an it's an idea so just generally in terms of the maps and how it looks i've spent a lot of time just gathering a bunch of assets and just filling in a bunch of little details around the village and doing little things like this i think this is really one of the biggest things um really is just those little details really add up so this is the game first thing that you'll notice is the start screen now we have a camera panning over the game world in various locations so this is kind of minecraft-esque lots of things do this very easy to do and i could just reuse the the world uh but it's quite cool because at some point i do want to put in some cutscenes and have some kind of like manual camera manipulation so it's a good good little practice just to add this in and i think it makes the game look a little bit better than what it was previously other than this castle looks terrible so yeah we've got the control screen where i just maybe updated the buttons a little bit the assets and here's the world and so you can see i've spent a lot of time just kind of um fleshing out the houses and adding in different npcs so this npc will like heal you for example this npc is more story related and then we have a blacksmith who at some point can maybe help you upgrade and craft weapons. So the first thing that I added was um, we now have stackable items and I added in a big bunch of items. So 
One of the things with an open world RPG is you're going to spend a lot of time adding in lots of items, NPCs and dialogue. And so I just worked on that. So now we have some boots and we have a shield. We can all equip them into different things. Uh, this NPC also has different things. We have a potion. If I equip the potion, I can then press Q and I can use potions and it would heal me if I wasn't already 100% um, health. So, we got all that added in. Leading on from that, we now actually have stats and these stats do work. So if I equip the different weapons and I armor, depending on what the stats of them are, the, the UI doesn't really do this justice because you can't see the stats, but you see there the health and the attack goes up based on what I'm wearing, which is pretty cool. And I've got a little developer thing here, you can see at the bottom, level one. We have levels, so if I give myself some XP, we level up, my max health increases, my attack and the health increase as well. So everything kind of scales based on items, stuff like that. Cool. Um, what else do we have? I have added in random chests, which will give you random items based off weightings. So at different parts of the map, you might find chests that will give you items. And I'm also going to tier the chests. So you have a tier one, tier two, tier three. Nice. And then I guess the next part would be in the dungeon. Before, you had to attack manually. So you, if you press the space bar, you'd attack. But now, it actually, depending on what weapon you have equipped, and we only have unarmed or sword right now, it will just attack manually. Now, I've gave myself crazy armor, so I'm kind of one-hitting everything right now. Uh, and I'm also level 13, so... I'm hitting things, so right now I'm doing unarmed attacks automatically whenever something gets in range. And then if I equip the sword, I then do a cleaving sword attack. And this all scales based off my level, it scales based off my armor. And it's definitely a little bit more vampire, vampire survivors esque, which I think is a step in the right direction. A separate um, enemy now, which. They all have different armor values, different health values, and different attack values, so... Yeah. Starting to... We're starting to get there a little bit. Now, if you see here, we've got XP. This is actually XP that you've gained in the dungeon so far, so... If I kill one of these, um... Darker enemies, the XP goes up to 585, and this is... Once we're out of the dungeon, uh, we will then get this XP, and we will then be able to level up thought that was everything but I also remembered that I did add in another quite cool thing and as I was saying earlier I think a lot of the details are really kind of what fleshes everything out so I now have zonal music so when I walk over here we now have different music and I think just stuff like this is really cool and it's so simple to implement I basically have just really big area 2ds over various parts of the map that will trigger the music changing but it's such a small thing that can really make things just seem overall highly polished so if you guys remember in the first episode i actually talked and recommended a book called the art of game design i just wanted to share something with you that i read that um kind of really helped me as someone who's more on the technical side and less on the creative side and it was essentially there was a group of students who was making 100 games and they'd make a game every day with lots of different ideas and throwing things around a lot. And one of the things that they found really useful was take something from your daily life that you want to share with other people and build that experience into the game. So it could be completely unrelated to a game. So, you know, making music, learning languages, things like that. Um, and just take something that you enjoy and think about why you enjoy that and try and build that into the game. And that really helped me kind of just think of out, things outside the box um, and just think of things that I enjoy doing. And then how do I share that? How do I put that into a game and how do I share that with people? So that's essentially the project so far. It's definitely not the best thing in the world. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. It's, you know, 
relatively mundane, but I do just want to take a second to talk about how far we've came. So throughout the whole process of this challenge, and this is basically why I did it, was just to learn more and more and more and just try different things, see what things worked, see what things didn't work. Um, and that's really happened, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've done a lot of things that have worked, but caused me headaches down the line. But generally, I feel like if I have an idea of what I want to do, I can achieve that. And I'm not fighting with Godot anymore. I've learned a lot of different techniques that, you know, if I want to achieve something, I know there's a few ways of doing it. And I could really start to refine those processes and really kind of find out what works well. Do components work well? Do singletons work well? Do all these different things that you could do to achieve prob uh, to to achieve a result, which works the best? And so I think that's really just the important thing. You know, if I started making another game now where maybe it was scoped a little bit easier, I think I could probably do a much better job. And that's really, like I said, why I did this challenge wasn't to, you know, not because I think I'm going to make the next amazing game in 200 hours. It's just to really get used to the tools, get used to the techniques and patterns. And, you know, if I could do it, anybody can do it. So there we are. We're halfway through the challenge right now. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what the next 100 hours goes through, but we're going to get there slowly. So, yep, that's everything for me. Hope everyone's doing well, and I'll see you guys next time.